His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable congratulations to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboun, on his country's anniversary of the November 1st Revolution Day. His Majesty the King hailed the Bahraini Algerian relations, wishing the President abundant health and the people of Algeria further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Safriya Palace the family of fallen servicemen Major Mohammed Salem Mohammed Ambar from the BDF's task force, who sacrificed his life while undertaking his patriotic duties within the Arab coalition forces stationed along the southern borders of Saudi Arabia as part of the operations Decisive Storm and Restoring Hope. His Majesty offered deepest condolences to the late servicemen's family, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace and to grant his relatives with patience and fortitude. His Majesty affirmed that the kingdom's fallen servicemen had set the best examples of courage and bravery, and therefore their sacrifices will remain engraved in the national memory, as they represent a source of inspiration for their patriotism and valor. He added that providing care and support to the families of the late servicemen will always be a top priority. His Majesty asserted that Bahrain will remain strong and advanced with its citizens' unity, cohesion and solidarity, as well as loyalty to their leadership. His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of fallen servicemen in eternal peace and bless the wounded with a speedy recovery, wishing the kingdom further progress and glory. The relatives of the late servicemen extended profound thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for His Majesty's condolences and sympathy, wishing him abundant health and happiness. Their renewed allegiance and loyalty to His Majesty the King expressing pride in their late son and in all Bahraini fallen servicemen. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable congratulations to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboun, on the anniversary of Algeria's Revolution Day. His Royal Highness also sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister of Algeria, Ayman bin Abdul Rahman. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, at Qadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness noted that public-private partnerships have contributed to the success of national initiatives and programs aimed at serving citizens, providing all with quality job opportunities, and achieving economic development in line with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visions. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's pride in the contributions of the private sector in furthering Bahrain's development. His Royal Highness noted the importance of economic diversification efforts to provide quality job opportunities for citizens, support sustainable development and advance the Kingdom's competitiveness in line with the Economic Recovery Plan and Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 as well. His Royal Highness commended the BCCI's prominent role in focusing the efforts of the private sector to advance Bahrain's development to meet its citizens' aspirations. For his part, Nas expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting the BCCI's role to benefit the Kingdom and its citizens. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting.
under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The third edition of His Highness's Amateur Cycling Tour will be launched, organized by the Bahrain Cycling Association in cooperation with Eventat. The tour will be held from 1st to 4th November. The tour comes within the framework of His Highness's keenness to continue discovering new talents in cycling, in addition to supporting amateur riders, highlighting their technical abilities and promoting the sport in the community. The tour aims to highlight the beauty of Bahrain and its landmarks and enhance the positive impact on this sport in public health. A press conference was held for the event where the president of the Bahrain Cycling Association, Sheikh Khalid bin, Hamad, bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his patronage and support of the tour. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Royal Golf Club. His Highness was briefed on the development work in preparation for the Bahrain Championship 2024 DP World Tour, held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa from the 1st to the 4th of February 2024. The CEO of the General Sports Authorities, Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar, CEO of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Dr. Nasser Qaidi, BOC Secretary General Faris Al Kohiji, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Royal Golf Club, Captain Walid Al Alawi, and a DP World representative were present. During the tour, His Highness underlined the importance of maximizing efforts to prepare for the upcoming tournament, which will feature an elite group of champions and golf professionals. He praised the development of the club's capabilities in hosting major international golf tournaments and emphasized the need to accelerate work to ensure the success of the tournament and the club's readiness for holding major international tournaments.
The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to enhance its status on the sports map on the global level through hosting major sporting events, most recent of which is the Bahrain Championship 2024 DP World Tour for Golf, held under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Royal Golf Club, where he was briefed on the development work in preparation for the event. His Highness directed for the full preparation of the event to ensure its success and enhance the status of the kingdom on the international level. We're here today at the Royal Golf Club to welcome His Highness Sheikh Khalid, who uh, has kindly agreed to come along and, and really hear how plans are going for the Bahrain Championship which will take place in February. So we're looking forward to updating him on, the, on, on how the golf course is going, uh, how the plans are going. Uh, we will be announcing ticketing soon as well. So lots of uh, preparations going on, and we're excited to let him now know what those plans look like. The event is one of a kind in the Kingdom of Bahrain and proves the Kingdom's ability to host major sporting events and also highlights Bahrain's organizational capabilities on the regional and international levels. The golf sport receives great attention from His Majesty the King, who is also keen on practicing the sport, which formed a motivation to host this high-profile event. The Representatives Council held its weekly session presided over by its Speaker Ahmed Lim Salem. During the session, they discussed proposals presented by the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee, and the Services Committee. The Council approved the recommendation of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee on the Arab Charter on Human Rights. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its regular meeting under the chairmanship of Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The Council praised His Majesty the King's stances in support of the Palestinian cause. The CIA lauded the keynote speeches delivered by His Majesty the King at the GCC ASEAN Summit and the Cairo Summit for Peace, in addition to His Majesty's talks with many leaders on regional and global peace. It commended His Majesty's directors to deliver urgent humanitarian relief aid to the Palestinians to alleviate their suffering. It also hailed the national campaign launched by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation to support the Palestinians, valuing the Bahraini people's massive interaction with the fundraising campaign. The Council denounced and condemned the escalation of Israeli war on the Gaza Strip and the continuous humanitarian violations, stressing the need to immediately put an end to hostilities, provide full protection to civilians and civilian facilities, as well as opening urgent humanitarian corridors to allow the entry of medical and relief supplies. It also underlined its rejection of calls to displace the Palestinians and called for concerted Arab and Islamic efforts to supporting Palestinians' legitimate rights. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, led the Bahraini delegation at the 21st meeting of the GCC Housing Ministers. The meeting reviewed the developments in the joint housing databases and unified general rules for real estate owners in the GCC and the General Secretary's proposal regarding signing agreements with specialized organizations that serve the housing sector. Ramehi affirmed the joint housing action among the GCC contributed to unifying visions and developing housing policies. She highlighted Bahrain's efforts in exchanging expertise, plans and achieving common goals. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, participated in the dialogue session of GCC Housing Ministers as part of the first GCC Housing Conference organized by Amman, where the session discussed developments in housing policies and plans in GCC countries. The Minister affirmed that the social housing sector is witnessing many challenges, especially with regards to the growing volume of demand for housing services. She noted that the GCC countries are moving steadily towards achieving this goal by diversifying housing policies and adopting innovative solutions in partnership with the private sector. The minister said that Bahrain has prioritized the involvement of the private sector in the social housing system and government programs. She added that the new housing programs are popular with citizens and have been able to meet thousands of orders since their launch in 2022. The panel discussion was followed by an inspection tour of the GCC housing exhibition and a visit to the pavilion of Bahrain's Ministry of Housing. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a, met with the Acting Executive Director for School Operations at Abu Dhabi, Omar al Dahri. A number of topics related to the development of the educational school operations were discussed in addition to the agreement to mutually benefit from the experiences of both parties. They also discussed the latest educational projects and programs being implemented in the school sector of both countries. 
The Diplomatic Protocol, Communications and Association with the Walt Disney Publishing and National Geographic launched the Explore Beyond Book and Project in Bahrain. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Labor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities President, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, CEO of the National Communication Center, Ahmed Khalid Al Arifi, attended the launch of the book. The Minister of Information emphasized the significance of documenting and showcasing Bahrain's cultural landmarks and highlighting the country's rich history and heritage. He said the project will showcase Bahrain's cultural achievements, support various sectors, and reflect the status of the national economy, highlighting its unique investment potential and the country's significant cultural, economic, and tourism achievements. The founder of Diplomatic Protocol Communications, Janice Lotrick, affirmed that the project is the culmination of seven years of work and collaboration between several bodies, noting the support provided by the relevant authorities to make this project possible. Actually, publishing the book was the stage two. The first stage was building a national archive for Bahrainis, for the government, to show the beauty and uh, these things, which uh, combined with it as development, economy, we touch the ground with the culture, heritage, and we try to answer all the questions which are sometimes hidden. So we try to highlight everything which could be in interest for the foreign uh, diplomats, investors, and of course, travelers. In these seven years, the pleasure was that we meet almost everyone from all the government entities, ministries, His Majesty. Um, I must highlight that uh, I have deep respect for them. They always give me opportunities to, to, to reach the things which are sometimes closed for general public. It was a big pleasure to come to, to the... Uh, especially nature was the most fascinating thing for me. Hawara Islands is, is, I think, a jewel of Bahrain. I think more people should know about that, but in the same time preserve what you have. The SDMX conference continues for its Thursday with a wide participation of speakers in its panel discussions. More on this report. The first session of the day discussed the successful implementation of SDMX and lessons learned from each country's experience, chaired by Eve Jack from the UNICEF, who noted that the conference allows the participants to better understand the important development issues of data and metadata across regions. I think we can see that uh, SDMX is advancing as a standard across uh, various countries. There are still technical challenges to its implementation. And one of the things that would mean the most to me is that we're able to put more resources toward helping some of our most, I would say, our, our low income and neediest countries to be able to better organize their development data so that we can understand the most pressing problems they have and how we can help them address it. The speakers of the session represented several international entities such as UNSD, ESQA, Somali National Bureau of Statistics, GCC Stat, Reserve Bank of India, and Maldives Bureau of Statistics. Head of IT at Bank of International Settlements, Rafael Schmidt, stressed that the SDMX is about knowledge sharing, where many papers presented collaboration projects between National Statistical Office implementation projects and international organization implementation projects. In addition to, to knowledge sharing, you know, collaboration, uh, this conference is also important for networking. People get to know each other, they know whom to talk to if they need, for example, more support on capacity training, if they need more support on the implementation of you know, the tools necessary for uh, implementing SDMX. And um, in addition to networking, um, people also um, get the opportunity here to uh, meet vendors. The event has drawn more than 500 participants from 107 countries, including data science experts, officials from international institutions, statisticians, and data users from national, regional, and international organizations, as well as academia and the private sector. Deputy Head of Department at BIS, Biliana Bogdanova, expressed her interest in the session's theme, noting the importance of such meetings to exchange experience in the field of statistics and data analysis. We had amazing uh, two and a half days 
with presentations which helped me answer many questions, but also very thought-provoking presentations and discussions which raised new questions and thinking on, on how to exploit further opportunities in leveraging SDMX within our organization. The conference held from 29th October to 2nd November will host a series of discussions and workshops focused on SDMX. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatma Najam. The Local Economy Overview Report issued by the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry on Economic Performance during the second quarter of 2023 showed an increase in foreign direct investment flows to Bahrain by 9.7%, according to the World Investment Report 2023 issued by the UN Conference on Trade and Development. Bahrain's real GDP grew by 2% in the second quarter of 2023, driven by growth of 2% in the non-oil sector and a growth of 2.2% in the oil sector and the non-oil sector, whose development the government was keen on supporting. 